Hello fellow SREs, welcome back to SRE with Ben. Today we are going to continue on uh, alert and response section and we are going to learn about policies and the remaining part of alert and response. So in our previous session we have uh, created a custom monitoring health rule which is monitoring the response time and calls per minute for a business transactions that is the orders transactions. As we discussed health rule is a condition. So today we are going to talk about policies. So what is a policy? A policy is basically a trigger and an action that happens for a particular event that takes place in app dynamics. For example, we have configured the health rule, right? If suppose there is a critical breach or a warning breach in the health rule condition, that is an event, we can configure a policy to trigger whenever health rule violations occur and uh, take required actions for it, like sending an email or uh, running a script or hitting a web service call or a REST API call, things like that. You can create policies in two ways. One is using the policy setup wizard and another is to create policy manually. We will be configuring the policy manually. So click on create policy. Let me give a meaningful name for this policy. Here we have the enable disabled option. Let me keep it to true. Then we have something called as execute actions and batch. We will come back to this data. Like I told you, a policy is basically a trigger which fires whenever any events that we configure occur. So there are various types of events for which you can configure a policy. Here we have HR violation events. These are the conditions that we configure using HR. Then we have anomalies. Then there are other events where you can directly configure the conditions instead of using an HR. You can use HRs whenever you want a combination of conditions and if you have a direct condition like only monitor slow transactions, application changes, server crashes, things like that, you can directly configure the event here and use the policy instead of creating an HR. Since I already have an HR, let me configure this policy for my HR. As we discussed in our previous session, whenever HR violation happens, there are few events that the health rule triggers. Whenever a warning threshold breaches, there is a warning started event. Whenever there is a critical threshold breach, there is a critical started event. If a warning threshold continues to breach, then it's called a warning continuous event. If a critical threshold continues to breach, it is called a critical continuous event. Then there are upgraded and downgraded events for warning to critical and critical to warning. And we have the ended and cancelled events for both warning and critical. So we will have to select which type of events we would like to take actions on or trigger this policy for. Since I have configured both my warning and critical, let me click warning started, critical started. And if I want some action to be taken every time the warning or critical continues, I can select both these. And if I want any action to be taken when upgraded, or downgraded, I can select any one of these. I don't want any action to be taken for downgraded. So let me just select upgraded. I want to take an action even when there is a warning to critical upgraded. So I'm going to select this as well. I don't want to take any actions when the events end. So I'm not going to select any of these. You would need a clear understanding of these events to configure a policy correctly. As we already discussed, there are other events also that can be configured. We have various options. You can also add something called as a custom event. This can be used whenever you are using synthetic monitoring and uh, you would like to monitor a particular step in the script. Next, let's go to the health rule scope section. Here, we have to specify which health rule this policy will be associated with. Since we have created our health rule, let's add that health rule here. Click on the plus sign and select the health rule. So we have selected the health rule in scope for which this policy should trigger an action. Next we have the object scope. Your object scope can be used whenever you select these other events in your uh, trigger section. For example, if you would like to monitor slow transactions under other events, you would have to select what type of slow transaction. I'm selecting very slow. Then select the object on which these transactions should be monitored. So I'm going to select these specified objects and add business transactions and um, add the transactions on which I would like this to be monitored. 
This way you can define the scope of objects for your other events as well. Let me remove this since I am only using the health rule scope for this policy. So whenever you want to configure policy directly for other events, make sure to give the object scope correctly here. Next we have the action section. Actions is like just like the name says, what action you would like to execute whenever this event occurs for this policy. So whenever my health rule violation happens, what action I would like this policy to take. There are various actions that you can perform. Click on the add button and click on create. Here you see a number of actions that a policy can help you achieve. For example, send an email, send an SMS message. You can start a diagnostic session for a business transaction. If it's a Java application, you can take the thread dump and do analysis on it. Or if you would like to run a script, for example, your application crashes and you would like to uh, restart the application, then you can run a script. For running a script, uh, you will need a machine agent on the app server agent and uh, the script needs to be placed under the machine agent script folder. Then you have HTTP request to make REST calls if you have to update this event data somewhere. I am going to select send an email and click OK. It asks me for an email address to whom the alert should be triggered to. You can specify multiple email addresses here by using the comma character and giving the email addresses and clicking on save. Here now my action has been added. I have selected the action and click on select. Click OK. With that we are done with policy configurations. So whenever this health rule violations occur, as per the selected uh, events, this policy will send an email to the given email address. Now coming back to execute actions in batch, when you select this option, if there were 100 events in the last one minute, then this policy will treat it as a batch and uh, trigger one action for the entire batch. So it will just trigger one email alert instead of 100 email alerts for the 100 events. So this execute actions in batch will be useful for you when you trigger email alerts as actions. In case of actions like taking a thread dump, this will not be very useful since the thread dump might be from different nodes and you would like thread dump from all the nodes for proper analysis. So you will have to configure this option as per your use case. Click on save to save the policy. Now we can see the policy has been created successfully. And here we have an overview of the policy. What is the name of the policy? What is the trigger events? I have configured health role events and other events. And what is the scope of that event? And uh, what is the actions to perform? You can also create actions from this section called actions and add action. The same way you can uh, define the action that you would like to perform and uh, click on OK and configure the action. Like I mentioned, if you would like to perform any script execution, make sure you place the scripts under the machine agent directory under local scripts folder. This way you can directly configure actions from here. Then we have a section called as action suppression. If suppose the application that you are monitoring is under maintenance and uh, you would like to stop these policies from performing any action during these maintenance period, then you can do that by configuring an action suppression. For that, click on create and uh, define the start time and end time of your maintenance. If it's a one-time activity, you can mention the start and end time here. If it's a recurring activity, for example, my application is having maintenance every week, then I can configure it weekly or monthly and uh, define the time period during which I want the policies to be suppressed. Then I can define the object scope. Same as your policy object scope, you can define the scope of object for your other events here. Business transactions, tires and nodes, servers, etc. Or if you would like to suppress actions for certain health rules, you can define that as well. And you can select the health rule for which you want actions to be suppressed. So action suppressions are helpful in suppressing the actions that policies perform. Under alert and respond, you also have various templates that you can define for your actions to use. For example, your email template can be used. This way you can configure how your email will look when it's triggered from AppD. You can have a HTML body or text body. Also, there are some predefined AppD event objects. You can use those objects 
to dynamically get the event details and uh, send an email. Once you define the email template here, whenever an action uses this template, your email body will look just like what you define in the body section here. You can use the predefined AppD objects to customize this. Here you also have alerting templates which can be configured as well pertaining to certain applications. Then you have your HTTP request templates. Here you can configure the details regarding your HTTP request, the body data, the URL, headers, authentication, and all the details that you require to make an HTTP request can be configured here and saved. And these templates can be used by your action whenever you perform an action. For example, if I create a make an HTTP request, then I will have to select the template. Since I don't have any templates, I have to configure it as per the HTTP request details. Then we have the anomaly detection section in alert and respond. As discussed in our previous videos, AppD uses AI and predictive analysis. You can use this AppD feature to train your uh, AI models based on the data that is coming into AppD and uh, create anomalies. This way AppD will self-learn and do predictive analysis and uh, help you do root cause analysis sooner before your issue occurs. For anomalies to work, you will have to train your AppD model well for that uh, huge data is required. The more the number of data that AppD possesses, the better its uh, predictive uh, analysis will be. So this is how you can use the anomaly detection section. We are done with today's video. This is how you can uh, use alert and respond in AppD to monitor applications. Hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Happy learning.